beautiful night as it turns out. As you look at this jam-packed Yankee Stadium. And John Lieber is getting ready to take on this lineup. Same as last night. Damon Bellhorn Ramirez, Ortiz Millar Nixon, Veritek, Cabrera, and Billy Miller bats in the number nine spot at third base. So Johnny Damon, who struck out in all four plate appearances last night, has played 1,426 games in his career, including the postseason. First time that's ever happened. And you look at his numbers, even in the postseason, after an 0 for 4. He's had a good October for the Red Sox. John Lieber won 14 games for Joe Torre and the Yankees. Tremendous success here at Yankee Stadium, where he was 11 and 3. He's a ground ball pitcher. He can jam hitters. That's an unusual combination. And the dirt in front of home plate is unaltered. They do alter it for Kevin Brown, but not John Lieber. And a ball misses outside to Johnny Damon. Damon talked before this series about the importance of playing the Yankees in this LCS. Saying if he should go on to win the World Series and would have played Minnesota, people would have said, yeah, but he didn't beat the Yankees to get there. So they get the Yankees in the Red Sox trail one game to none. There's a strike to one. There's that statistic that Damon wants no part of ever again. So much to talk about with regard to Kurt Schilling. Damon is out in front. And a slow roller to Olrud. As we play here in the first inning, we remind you, baseball fans, grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. One up, one down for the Boston Red Sox, and Mark Bellhorn will step to the plate. When we talked about that dirt right in front of home plate being unaltered, there are some teams with ground ball pitchers who keep it soft in front of home plate instead of hard so you don't get those high bounding balls. A guy like Al Leiter, for instance. That's easy in the shallow center. Jeter, two up for the Red Sox, two down. We look at how the Yankees cover the field with tonight's New York Yankees defense brought to you by State Farm. Matsui, Williams, and Sheffield in the outfield. Olrud, one of the best defensive first basemen ever with regard to his fielding percentage. Joined by Cairo, Jeter, Rodriguez, Posada catching Cena. Last night, tonight it's Lieber. Same group, different guy in the middle of it all, and John Lieber is a guy that nobody talks about. Guy who sat out all of last year. It came back and was so good here at home. 14 and 8 overall. We will keep you up to date with what's going on in St. Louis all night. And this crowd wants another perfect first inning. Last night they got it from Messina. Tonight they want it from Lieber. Lieber bats as well with Ramirez with that sinking fastball in on his hands. Ramirez wants to extend his arms. This is a good matchup for Lieber. The fact that Lieber likes to pound him inside. That's right where they go. Ball one. It's a purpose pitch. Up and, up and in, 0-2. They've been doing it for 100 years. Normally after a pitch like that, you'd see a slider down the way. Did he pitch in this league? Pedro Martinez gets set to go. The Red Sox hopes hanging on his right arm. The chant of Who's Your Daddy? was heard from this big Yankee Stadium crowd and Pedro stood out in the middle of all this and pointed up to the sky. And he'll take on Jeter, Rodriguez, and Sheffield here in the bottom of the first inning. And there are the regular season numbers for Pedro at the bottom. A game two winner against Anaheim in the division series. Three dynamite pitches, the failing fastball, the changeup, and the breaking ball. He has an uncanny feel for hitters. 
But his September song was a bad tune. He's 0-4 in September. The three-time Cy Young Award winner. And the guy who has faced the Yankees 30 times. Red Sox 11 and 19 in those 30 starts that Martinez has made against New York. And Pedro starts it for the ball outside. Of all the things that they said about Pedro Martinez after that start in Anaheim, they all talked about his ability to still throw 93 miles per hour in the seventh inning. And I would say, Al, tonight, he's got extra rest. It's not cold. It's 60 degrees out. The elements are in Pedro's favor to have a big night. That's right. Potentially, I'm not, you don't look at it this way, but it could be his last start, so you're really not holding back for anything. On 2-0, oh, he lets it fly 94 miles per hour, and it's 3-0. Oh. The reason that it's important to maintain the fastball, 93 or 94, is to maintain that difference between the changeup and the fastball. But behind here, ooh, four in a row, out of the strike zone, a leadoff walk. Pedro will face this group, Jeter, now Rodriguez, Sheffield, Matsui. What a cleanup hitter he has blossomed into for Joe Torre. Williams, Posada, Olrud, Cairo, and Lofton was hit well against Pedro in his career. See what Matsui did last night, tying the ALCS record with five RBIs. Houston already out on top in St. Louis, 2-0. Veritek's throw. Very good. And safe as Bellhorn dropped it. The throw was perfect. The second base umpire, Jim Joyce, says safe. I think the Yankees got away with one there. I don't think it's a good idea to run in the first inning when the starting pitcher has thrown four straight balls. Until he finds the strike zone. Not a good idea to run, but Jeter and the Yankees get away with it. Bellhorn never had control of the ball with stolen base for Derek Jeter. Veritek could not have thrown it any better. And now Rodriguez has an RBI chance here in the first. sure they're straight with their signs and that got a reaction from the crowd as you look at A-Rod's career numbers against Pedro. Yeah, but that's a bad omen in the first inning. I mean, when you have to go out there with the first guy who gets on second base, pitching and catching is like a lot of things. There's a certain cadence and rhythm that goes to it and that can upset the cadence and rhythm. A one out to Rodriguez. Well, there's a communication with it, too. Uh, you don't know the scouting reporter how they sit down before the game. But Veritek, many pitchers change their, their signs during the game, especially when you play against the same team all the time. And who knows? Maybe he changed the sign. Maybe he wanted to go first sign after two, and he changed it to first sign after one. Dave Wallace is rocking in that dugout. Fans in these seats were ready to rock on a 2-0 count. Vader has yet to throw a strike. 2-1. Rodriguez can handle that pitch. The ball away is his power pitch. Great power to right center field. Two and two. saying before the game no quote gets left untouched somebody says something in the papers finds its way into a chant here at Yankee Stadium two balls two strikes and Rodriguez a lot of attention to Peter and that hits 
Rodriguez to put two on here in the first. Because of Rodriguez' power the other way, American League teams try to pitch him inside. This one too far inside, and it looks like it hit the right wrist, just shaving the right glove of Rodriguez. A lot of life to these fastballs from Martinez in the first, but he can't control them. And with two on, nobody out here is Sheffield. That ball will fall for a hit. Jeter's coming to the plate. Damon's throw. Too late. Yankees score first. Garrett Jeter did not have a good jump from second base. He stopped about two-thirds of the way between second and third to see if the ball was going to be hit. See Baratek right there changing the sides. What Tim said earlier, that's not good. When you're feeling that already in the first inning of having to change your sides, you're thinking about other things other than executing a pitch. And it affects the way you, you throw it. Sheffield, who was drilled by Pedro Martinez on July 1st, took exception to it. It definitely had a purpose behind it. See, Damon's throw was way late. Jeffield saying, I'm giving him one free one. That's it. And he gets him here in the first inning to put New York on top. Now it's Matsui. And it's strike one. Derek Jeter had to wait about two-thirds of the way between second and third. And the Yankees running on Johnny Damon's throwing arm. Right there, stopping, starting again, scoring the first run. But they're going to run on Damon any chance they get. Damon does not possess a good throwing arm. And the first inning with nobody out, and even with that jump, they said Damon's not going to throw out Jeter. And it's 0-2 now on Matsui. Still 0-2. Game break is coming as soon as we can find the right time to give it to you. Ernie Williams waits on deck. Rodriguez hit by a pitch. Sheffield has the game's first RBI. This could be a disastrous start for Martinez and the Red Sox. Cannot limit the damage. Still nobody out. And here we go again. Now, there's no excuse for this. Number one, in my opinion, why are you changing the signs if nobody's been on second base? I mean, these things, you've had all day to go over stuff like this. What are you changing it from? It hasn't even started yet. He's going to pitch without a sign. On the inside corner, one out. Matsui strikes out. Two on, one out. Let's get a game break. Genie's Alaska. Well, now we know why the Astros couldn't advance to the postseason. In the past, they were short one. Killer B, as in Beltran. Have you met Carlos? He's been in your living room a lot this October. Five more runs, 11 RBIs in the postseason. Astros with the lead of bottom one. What a division series he had, Genie, and off to a good start as the Astros roll into that series. Maybe a little weary physically, but as far as their bats are concerned, red hot after that Game 5 thrashing in Atlanta. And no Astro hotter than Beltran. Here's Bernie Williams, two on, one out. Strike one. Let's go back to that strikeout pitch to Matsui. This is just a painted fastball in the inside corner. 
Maybe he got it. Looked like a good pitch to me. I'll say this, as far as velocity, jump, and life on the fastball, I know he's walked the hitter and he's hit a batter. But so far, so good with regard to the stuff from Pedro Martinez. It's 0 2. Tied him up inside with a good fastball. Historically, this team, when you face the Yankees, have been known to be able to get signs or location. If you see how late Veritek is setting up, most instances, they'll set up late. Ooh, look at that. So that the runner at second base doesn't give the sign or the location of the pitch where the catcher sets up. Look at this late shift. Setting up high and then low and away. Two on, one out, one ball, two strikes on Bernie Williams. It almost, the way this first inning has unfolded, it almost makes you believe that the Red Sox believe the Yankees have been clued in on what Pedro Martinez has been throwing them, especially with the back-to-back -back losses late in the year. Because they are way too concerned with what's going on back at second base as opposed to what's happening at the plate. Yeah, they've, had, they've had Jeter on second base and Rodriguez, but you can out think yourself. I, I, nobody has more respect for Jason Veritek than I do. But when you have to go out there the first time a runner gets on a second base, you're going through too many signs. Now a 2-2. Two -two. On the outside corner, back-to-back -back strikeout. Good breaking ball from Martinez. A designed pitch to stay outside. Take a look at the defense for Boston and how they cover the field. Their defense brought to you by State Farm. Same group as last night. Cabrera highlighted it short. His double play partner is Bellhorn. Veritek doing the catching, and he's been awfully busy physically and mentally here in the first inning. Two on, two out. Here's the side. See the Cardinals have tied Houston in the bottom of the first. Sada almost walked into that pitch. I agree with you, Tim. It's too early in the game. If they're hitting him, line drives all over the place, then you might assume that there's runners at second base that are given a sign. But right out, of, right out of the jump street there, for him to start changing the signs every time. Yeah, you've had a walk, a hit batsman, and a, and a ball hit by Sheffield off the trademark. However, after allowing a run to score and having first and second nobody out, Back-to-back, -back, all third strikes to Matsui and Williams. A 1-0 count on Posada. Another good pitch. 1-1. One one. You like the stuff you see so far from Pedro Martinez, Al? Sure. How, how could you not? If there's talk that his fastball was an 88-89 range. He's throwing 94-95 miles an hour with an 82-mile-an-hour changeup right there. That was the secret to his success when he was regarded as the game's best pitcher. He could dial up 95, 96, and then throw that change up, and hitters couldn't adjust. He counts two and one now on Posada, and again, Veritek goes out to the mound. I'll tell you, aircraft carriers don't have this many signs. A choppy, choppy seas. But if it helps him, maybe it'll slow him down, make him concentrate a little better. Here's a 2-1. Breaking ball for a strike, two balls, two strikes. So now Martinez is in a spot to strike out the side. He can get the side. He got a dart off the mound be happy with what's happened in the first inning even giving up a run 95 miles an hour and Posada got a piece of it to stay alive 
they clearly feel that the Yankees are given signs, mainly location. They set up inside on the fastball early, and then you saw Veritek jump late on the outside corner. There's no question that the Red Sox think that, that in particular, Alex Rodriguez is given location. Rodriguez just touched his face in a couple of different spots, so even if he isn't, certainly making the Red Sox believe that he is. Two balls, two strikes. Sada fights it off. What about you, Al, for a pitcher with a catcher who's showing location in one spot and then just as you're about to bring it to the plate, jumps into some other area? For me, I, I'm okay with it because I kind of pick an area. I don't necessarily throw for the glove or you hear guys throw for a shin guard or with a mask. It's okay for late movement. And if it's going to help Pedro's mind to be relaxed, to know that these guys aren't given signs or location, it's okay. But clearly, he's being able to do it. He's throwing very good pitches here. Another 2-2. Two -two. Three hops to Bellhorn. What could have been a big first inning for the Yankees, they get only one. Thanks to a leadoff walk. One to nothing, New York, game two. Will this be a day when special things happen for Pedro Martinez as David Ortiz leads it off? Ortiz, Millar, and Nixon for the Red Sox here in the second. Ortiz last night, two out of four with two RBIs. Came also close to tying the game in the eighth inning off Tom Gordon. He is a dangerous hitter for John Lieber, for any pitcher, but particularly Lieber. And Lieber's pitching him like that. Lieber had all sorts of problems with left-handed batters this year. The highest average in the American League. 343 against him, and it counts 3-1. Update coming when we get the chance. Ortiz hit 41 home runs during the regular season. And he draws a leadoff walk. So Ortiz is on, and out to Genie we go with a game break. No lead safe when facing the Cardinals lineup. We've learned this, haven't we? Especially when Albert Pujols has a bat in his hands. Two-run home run, third of the postseason. Ties up the ball game. Everybody has two. All right, Genie, thanks. And as I said, we will keep flipping you back and forth, or at least give you an idea of what's going on in St. Louis as we play this game in the Bronx. Millar now. There's ball one. The broadcast also available in Spanish by utilizing the SAP button on your television. Ball one to Millar. Last year it was cowboy up to the point where if you heard that phrase you wanted to get sick by the end of the postseason. <laughs> on and on and on but that's what Millar does Millar is kind of the emotional leader and the guy that everybody rallies around or goes to for a quote this year he's called his teammates a bunch of idiots different mantra from cowboy up to idiots but he means it in the nicest sense and he considers himself one here's a 2-0 straight up the shoot Jeter is there for out number one Well, I, we touched on it, and it's. I think this is the time to talk more about the Schilling situation. We talked about it last night. Clearly, he wasn't right. And with the report that came out today, we now know why he looked the way he looked on the mound with that sheath around the tendons behind the ankle being blown away and him having that tendon flipping across the ankle bone and clicking with every pitch that he brought to the plate. And his status for not only the rest of this series, but for the rest of the postseason. is very much up in the air and right now doesn't look good. Nixon takes a strike. They're going to try and find some sort of apparatus or some sort of brace that he can use that will allow him to have stability with that ankle, to keep those tendons in place and pitch. And if they can't find that, they're going to shut him down. Two out here in the second at 5 o'clock today. Dr. Bill Morgan of the Red Sox had this to say. First, um, during the Anaheim game, 
<clears throat> had a uh, subluxation or a tear of one of the tendons in his ankle or the sheath that houses the tendons themselves and the uh, so now the tendon is snapping over the bone we've been working on ways of making modifications for that uh, so that he'll be able to continue to pitch and that's what they're going to try and do on the side and see if he feels okay I think in one respect they believe that the shot of Martin that short acting anesthetic didn't give him the confidence with that ankle because he couldn't feel the pain. He didn't know what he could and couldn't do with it. So they may do without that this next time out. We'll talk about that. Veritek rounds out, and Lieber pitches very well after the leadoff walk. One to nothing, New York. Pedro Martinez showed good stuff in the first inning. Walked the leadoff hitter, Jeter, stole second, hit Rodriguez, and gave up an RBI hit to Sheffield. On the power of that, the Yankees lead one to nothing in game two. John Olrood, Miguel Cairo, and Kenny Lofton, the bottom three in the lineup. Coming up for Joe Torre. Olrood takes the ball. John one for three in game one. Ball one strike. So with the status of Schilling uncertain, there's obviously even more pressure on Pedro Martinez. Hard hit and one hop to Bellhorn. One out. If you go back through history and even recent history and look at some of the great power pitchers, whether it was Nolan Ryan, we're talking about the drive with the leg in the backside using the legs. Here's Roger Clemens. When you saw on all those power pitchers, there's a flex in the back leg. If you see where Schilling in 2001, the flex is much greater in angle than it is yet last night. He just wasn't pushing off as well. When you say ankle, what's the big deal? But it all starts from the ground up. And with his, if his ankle was as sore as it is, you can't push off. And therefore, you're not using your legs. It's all arm, injury, the ball's up, your velocity's down. That was the case last night, Tim. The ball was up, the velocity was down, and to take it a step further, they believe, like many do, that if you have an ankle, you start to compensate in other areas. You may blow out an arm trying to do something you're not capable of doing if the lower part of your body is not right. That's right. This was a pitch and a delivery. If you see it, just drags off. It's just, it's just lazily falling off the rubber as opposed to forcefully pushing off toward home plate. Cairo reaching for it, 2-2. Two, two. The biggest danger with that, it being a, a foot or an ankle or a hip, is that if you're not getting energy and force from the bottom half, it ends up being all arm. And you'll have arm injury, either shoulder or elbow. A drop and drive pitcher can neither drop nor drive. Cairo had a hit last night. That one takes off full count. Well, Joe, along with team physician Dr. William Morgan, the Red Sox have brought in an ankle specialist from Mass General who has treated Schilling previously, and he hopes to construct that new brace in time for a, a bullpen session tomorrow up at Fenway Park. Thanks, Kenny. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Cairo with one out. Draws the second walk handed out by Martinez tonight. For, for small in stature, Pedro's not as tall or, or heavy. He's a drop and drive. Pushing off, you can see the angle. Not as much as drop and drive in the day, but you have to have flexion on the backside to be able to push. The, rub, the foot in front of the rubber, pushing off, and there's flexion on the backside. He gets actually good torque and good push. Think of the delivery as a tightly wound spring, like a catapult. It all starts from the ground up, with your legs, your torso, your upper back, to your shoulder and elbow. It all works together. Kenny Lofton now with one on one out. Lofton a career 326 hitter against Martinez. That's why he's in there for a second straight night. And he adds to it with a base hit to center. So a one out walk, now a base hit. The Yankees are back in business and Jeter will step to the plate. 
after wildness usually comes, regardless of the stature of a pitcher, comes fastballs in the fat part of the plate. You walk a guy, you can't be too fine, Lofton taking advantage of it. Sheffield took advantage of it. A walk, a hit, batsman, a base hit. A walk, a base hit here in the second inning. Here's Jeter. He walked, stole a base, and scored a run in the first. Jeter just able to get his hands out of the way. Jeter hit by Martinez last year, along with Alfonso Soriano, who's the Yankees' second baseman last year. They were both taken to the hospital. And, of course, Pedro pitching inside. He did that in Boston. Both benches empty. Here's a 1-0. Inside again. Keep referring to the Who's Your Daddy chant if you're not familiar with why they're saying it. Pedro Martinez, after losing back-to-back -back starts to the Yankees in September, said, what can I say? I just tip my hat and call the Yankees my daddy. Said out of frustration after losing that second September start. 2-0. Center field, Damon is back. Two out. Cairo will tag and go to third, first and third. And the batter will be Rodriguez. Throughout the LCS, we're going to identify a key matchup in the game and determine who holds the direct TV advantage. Tonight, we compare Pedro Martinez, his career against the Yankees, and John Lieber against the Red Sox this year. Won a 14 to 4 game. September Lieber did against Boston. Within those starts, the 34 Pedro Martinez, along the way, he has hit 17 Yankees. He grazed A Rod his first time up, so add another, make it 18. His 31st start. Pitch number 40 coming right here from Martinez. Postseason career at Yankee Stadium in the six games, a 5-19 average for Rodriguez. A-Rod a chance to add to the Yankee lead. Runner at first walk is going on a foul ball. Back in September of 1999, Pedro allowed one hit and struck out 17 Yankees here at Yankee Stadium. So it's not as if he hasn't had success against the Yankees. The 0-1. He beat Clemens in the 99 playoffs. In 2001, he had that quote, wake up the Bambino and have him face me, maybe I'll thrill him. Game three last year, lost his composure, pointing to his head to the Yankee dugout, got into that fight with Zimmer. And that game seven start, he couldn't hold on to an eighth inning lead. Lamar kicks it out of the dirt, one ball, one strike, and the hitter a run. One thing you have to be here is you have to be a little more cautious if you're a base runner, because you already have a runner in scoring position, and you don't want to be thrown out at second base. Not with A-Rod hitting. Step to third, look to first, and nobody moved. That's a move I don't think I've ever seen Martinez use. 
that's close to a bar. Yeah, he stopped and hesitated. That third to first, everybody, everybody in the ballpark says, ah, it never works. What it is is just making the runner at first have to wait a little longer. So if it is a base hit to right, it'll be much more difficult for him to get to third base. So keep him closer. Here's a 1-1. Good pitch, strike two. This is the Bronx-New York game two of this ALCS. If you're looking for the Houston-St. Louis game, if you're watching on your Fox affiliate, turn to your local Fox Sports Net regional network. If you're watching us on FSN and you want the Astros and Cardinals game, turn to your local Fox affiliate. The Cardinals-Astros game 2-2 in the top of the third. One to nothing Yankees here in the bottom of the second. One ball, two strikes on Rodriguez. Two and two. Yeah, that pitch just surprises me here. You see the infield playing the pole. A-Rod is as good as anybody at going to the right field. You see the big hole on the right side, and that pitch was a fastball away. Just based on the infield defense with two strikes, for sure I would think that Page was going to try to come inside, but that ball was away. And again, step to third, look to first. You can say it keeps the runner close at first. I'll guarantee you there was a time when Pedro Martinez couldn't care less what that guy at first was doing. He was ready to get the ball and blow the guy at the plate away. And now he's concerned with Lofton with two strikes on the hitter. And two outs. I mean, he, he seems to have good stuff tonight. He's throwing the ball hard. His changeup is good. But, but he's working too slowly. There's no rhythm. There's no, again, no cadence. Lofton looking over at first base coach Roy White. He would be running on his own, however, if he takes off. Martinez, after a long look, and Rodriguez keeps it two and two. Six miles per hour with that last fastball from Pedro. He has hit as high as 97 on our radar gun here in the first couple of innings. But his pitch count is up. Forty-fifth pitch of the night coming right here. was frozen on a 3-2 breaking ball that hit the inside part of the plate. Three strikeouts for Martinez, one to nothing after two. If you ask Terry Francona, the Red Sox manager, if last night's comeback, even though it fell short by the Red Sox, will carry over and give them any momentum in game two, he says, well, I don't know. I mean, that's as good as said all the time as your next day starter. We're down 8 nothing. That's not a good situation to be in. So far, it's 1 to nothing. The Red Sox are looking to put their first rally together against Lieber, who's thrown well, and out in front of Cabrera, 0-2. Bill Miller and Johnny Damon will follow. Lieber has not allowed a hit. Now he has into left center field. That ball gets down and it's cut off by Matt Suey. Nice play. And he holds Cabrera to lead off single. Let's go back to the strikeout of Rodriguez to end the second. 
many instances when a backup, this is called a backup curveball, and hitters give up on it because when they see curveball, they anticipate the break being away. A Rod seeing it staying inside, he takes it, and it paints the inside corner. You can see Veritek setting up away, and it backs up and stays inside to get Rodriguez. Three strikeouts so far for Martinez. Now the Red Sox have their leadoff hitter on. Here's Miller. Cabrera starts and stops, and Miller plunks one to first like a punt. Down to second is Cabrera, one out. Weeknights at FSN, it's the greatest nightly sports show on television, the best damn sports show, period. This week, Hall of Famers Johnny Bench and Raleigh Fingers will drop by to help break down the playoffs. Plus, comedian Drew Carey and much more. That's weeknights only on FSN. Johnny Damon looking for his first hit of this series. Runner at second, one out. He's had some awful swing. What kind of swing was that by Johnny Damon? A guy with great bat control. Looked like his top hand just came off the bat. That's as bad a swing as I've ever seen Johnny Damon take. Drove home 94 runs during the regular season. Shatters his bat. Cairo, two out. Yeah, we talked about Joe Torrey saying that John Lieber jams a lot of hitters. It is rare for a guy who throws ground balls to be able to get inside the left-handers like Lieber can. Boy, this just chews up Damon's bat. That was a weird at bat by Johnny Damon. Tremendous late movement. When hitters identify pitches, they see it out about 20 feet. They have to commit. And it's that late movement, that last 10 or 15 feet, that gets a jam shot. Now it's up to Bellhorn with a runner at third, two out. Mark, a guy who hit 17 home runs, drove home 82 and set a Red Sox single season record for strikeouts with 177. He's the guy that broke up the perfect game last night. It happened in the seventh with one out. It was a double. And then before you knew it, the Red Sox were right back in the game. Nearly tied it in the eighth. One ball, one strike on Bellhorn. Bellhorn's jam and fouls it strike two. John Lieber, a guy who had Tommy John surgery in August of 02. Didn't make a start for the Yankees all last year. And now here he is. Game number two starter in the ALCS after giving the Yankees a good start in game two of the division series against Minnesota. He has three pitches here to make a quality pitch. Somewhere expanding, either in the dirt or up. Bellhorn floats one into center. Bernie Williams. And the inning is over. Lead off hit. Lieber gets around it. Sheffield will lead it off for the Yankees in the bottom of the third. Part of the order for this terrific Yankee lineup, Sheffield, Matsui, and Williams that had a club record 242 home runs during the regular season strike one Sheffield with an RBI single into center his first time up change up misses that's one one just wide two balls and strike In his career against Pedro Martinez, these numbers for Sheffield. What a rip. And a pop-up into shallow left. Cabrera with Ramirez breathing down his neck. One out. Scooter, tell us more about the changeup. 
Hello, friends. It's Scooter. A change-up is just another word for a slow ball. While the batter is looking for a real fast pitch, the pitcher throws me really, really slow. Guys use different grips, but this is the most popular grip. It's a with the two seam. You get your index finger off. You want your fingers between it and your hand behind the ball. With putting more pressure on the ball, you get drag and basically throw it with the same arm speed, and the ball will either drop or sink, and it's slower than your fastball. But the key to a good changeup is good arm speed. This is the most popular one. They call it a circle change. Finger off, there's your circle. Tim, you got to watch yourself when he does those yeah. over there. I feel like you're going to get a left cross to the jaw. I am leaning to my right. <laughs> Two balls, no strikes on Matsui, who struck out looking with two on in the first. And that's called taking a big, hard swing. That's, that's, one. that's the most important at bat for Martinez in this game thus far, that strikeout of Matsui, because the Yankees had runners on at first and second, nobody out. He had to get the strikeout. The Yankees struck him out, or I should say Martinez struck him out without advancing the runner. And that was a key. Veritek out to the mound again. Well, that time he was out there to try to give the home plate umpire Jeff Nelson time to let the pain subside in his right arm. He took that foul tip off the right arm, so we won't count that. Here's the ground ball to Millar, two out. You can if you want. I, I'm just keeping an unofficial total. I've got it at three. Call it for it. Uh, Al was talking about that drop and drive with Pedro's lower part of his body. I'll tell you what he needs. He needs a tailor with the chalk and a sewing machine for that. For the, I, I don't think I've ever seen a major league player wear his pants that low. I think they look like they're hooked onto the back of the, the back spike of the shoe. I think they'd have to be to stay there. Yeah. Strike one to Bernie Williams. Like a uniform with footies. <laughs> like spats. <laughs> Pedro Martinez needs a quick inning. He has had two long half innings against the Yankees, and he gets it here thanks to that pickup on the low flip from Kevin Millar. Manny Ramirez will be first up for Boston. Ortiz and Millar will follow against John Lieber. It'll be Bronson Arroyo for the Red Sox. And Kevin Brown for the Yankees in game three on Friday night at Fenway. Another pop-up. Ramirez floats it into right center field. And Bernie Williams picks it out number one. Mayor is now one for six in this series to this point. Here comes Ortiz. The Red Sox, the last time they were in the World Series, and I know you know this, Boston, but for the rest of the country, it was 1986. They lost the ALCS to Oakland, 88-90, and then they lost twice to the Yankees since then in 99 and 03. Meanwhile, the Yankees and LCS players, 6-0, under Joe Torres. A uh, strike hits the inside corner to Ortiz. Last time the Yankees lost a, an LCS was back in 1980 to the Kansas City Royals who faced the Philadelphia Phillies in the World Series and lost in six games. Ortiz pops it up. Cairo goes out to get it. Two down. And with the bases empty, Kevin Millar will be the hitter for Boston as these two pitchers have settled into this game. That pitch was in Ortiz's slot. He just missed that pitch. Inside part of the plate and down. Posada wanted that pitch up a little bit more. He crushes that ball. That is his power. He just missed it. takes the ball. The, the idiot. 
Good in. Hard to say. I mean, I know he calls himself that, but it's, it's hard to even let that escape out of my mouth. Those are words that are not ordinarily used together. Good idiot. Time called at the plate. I think it was Mikhevich who followed that up by saying, we're not the brightest tools in the shed. Check swing. Little comebacker to Lieber. And how good has John Lieber been? Almost handcuffed Olrude, but the inning is over. And to this point, the Red Sox have only one hit. Posada, Olrude, Cairo coming up. Still one zip, New York. First pitch, bottom of the fourth inning. A breaking ball that misses inside to Posada. One to nothing. The Yankees on an RBI hit by Sheffield in the first. Martinez has retired five straight, and he misses outside two and zero. Posada, Olrude, Cairo. Anybody gets on the number nine man, Lofton. One. Houston back on top of St. Louis 4-2 as they play in the fourth inning. Three and one. Posada, a very good fastball hitter. He saw two curveballs and a changeup. On off-speed pitches, he's batting 0 40. One for 25. Here's a 3-1. And Pedro gets a fastball by him. Full count. Chases a high fastball. And now the 3-2 pitch. A leadoff walk. That is three walks. Handed out by Martinez tonight. We look ahead to tomorrow night, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. It is game two of the NLCS, the Houston Astros and the St. Louis Cardinals. And a matchup of Pete Monroe against Matt Morris. Morris, like Lieber, has been much better pitching at home this season. Pete Monroe gets the start because Oswald and Clemens were used in games four and five in the division series. That's good news for Houston tonight. A 4-2 in the fourth inning as they start this NLCS with the back end of their rotation. Ball one inside to Olrud. Olrud looking down to Luis Soho, the third base coach. Perhaps a hit and run right here. Posada is not a fast runner, but the speed of the runner at first on a hit and run is not the important thing. It's whether the batter makes contact. Two and zero. Oh. Guess that pitch was called high. Here comes Dave Wallace, the Boston pitching coach. Well, in 2004, Tim, at the mask is high. I thought they were calling high strikes. That was the big edict a couple of years ago. When? Oh, it was, yeah. Right? But that's gone now? It ended the end of spring training. How would you know? You don't throw them. You don't throw high strikes. You don't think that low thunder, right? If I got it called strike, I'd throw it up there. <laughs> John Oler at 6 7. Uh, that's up. Even a begging pitcher like me, I'll say that's up. 2-0 oh is the count as Olrud watches Wallace stomp back to the dugout after visiting with Martinez. Run has scored in 42 of the 100 innings when a walk has been issued. 42% of the time a run has scored. This happened one time tonight and two chances prior to this leadoff walk in the fourth. Two and one now on Olrud. Olrud, believe it or not, is on the list as far as the top 
hitters with base hits in LCS play. Tied for fourth with 39 in his career coming into this game. Hassan is running and Olrud pops it up. Shallow center, Bellhorn, one on, one out. Jeannie Zelasko will tell us how Houston got the lead. Yeah, the Astros launched an LDS record 11 home runs versus Atlanta, so you know it's coming, right? The power surge continues for Carlos Beltran. Now you see Jeff Kent, a two run shot. Is the Astros the lead, 4 2, bottom four? Did you bond with Kent during his time? Did you ever play with Kent? No. Do you Toronto. missed him with the Mets? Yes. I was in Toronto. Actually, I was in Toronto when he was traded for David Cope. He didn't take well to the initial hazing that he got after ending up with New York in that David Cone trade. The guy who makes no bones about it. Not a guy that's looking to do interviews. He plays baseball and goes about his business. And he has put together, Tim, some eye-popping, staggering numbers among second basemen and what they've done with the bat. More home runs than any other second baseman. Coming to the Mets with Ryan Thompson. Then after a short stay in Cleveland for a half a year, he went to San Francisco. He has made his way. Cairo hits it into left field, and Manny Ramirez goes back to get it. Two out. Looked like a breaking ball that stayed up, and Cairo didn't get all of it. And with two down, we'll tell you, you can play Hit the Pros, presented by the all-new GMC Canyon, and face real pitches from today's best hurlers. Log on to FoxSports.com on MSN, keyword games, GMC. We are professional grade. So far, so good for Lofton in this LCS. Two out of four for the home run. Singled his first time tonight. A strike. He was swinging first pitch last at bat with a fastball down the middle for a base hit. Hendrick comes back with a first pitch change up. Oh, now the 0 1. Two. After this game started with a lot of intensity, a lot of emotion, a lot of noise from the crowd, it has quieted down quite a bit at Yankee Stadium. Yankees got to Martinez. First three reached. New York has scored a run, but since then, for the most part, Martinez has shut down New York. Good news for the Yankees. Lieber has been even better. One ball, two strikes on Lofton. You rarely hear a raucous crowd in a well-pitched game. Last night, Messina was great into the seventh and then lost it. Tonight, Lieber's allowed only one hit through four innings. Lofton strikes out. The inning is over. That's four strikeouts for Martinez. And Lofton and Pedro give each other a look as they head off the field. Back after this from your local Fox station. Well, how good has John Lieber been tonight? He has walked one, allowed a hit, struck out one, and that is all for his night. He has retired these Red Sox, protecting a one-run lead as Nixon takes the ball outside. All the talk about Pedro Martinez, and at this point, Lieber's outpitched him. They have to make him work. He's got 37 pitches after four innings. The way at this pace, he'll have 81 pitches through nine. Make him pitch. Make him use all of his pitches. Fight off, fight off pitches. Stay on the ball. Nixon flies it into left. Didn't hit it well. And Matsui hauls it in. One out. Earlier, Ellis Burks had this to say on the bench while Lieber was working in the fourth. You know, this guy likes to work real fast, huh? <laughs> he gets the ball, like to get on the mound and get after it. Kind of have to slow him down. Call timeout. Like, there you go. Slow him down. Don't let him get him in the rhythm. Lieber now works to Veritek, who takes a strike. There are very few successful pitchers that work slowly. Who is that? Very few. 
center of the ball against Lieber. He is pitching so well. And let's check in again with Kenny Albert. All right, Joe, all the way from Council Bluffs, Iowa. John Lieber's parents, his mom Lynn in front of me, and his dad Ray. Now, Ray, this is the first time you're watching John pitch in person in the postseason. Any butterflies tonight? Oh, no. No. I've gotten used to that. It just uh, whatever happens, happens. Now, I know in the past you've worn a Superman T-shirt underneath your jersey when John has been on the mound. Do you have it on tonight? No. I don't because I, I'm so excited to be here that I forgot it. But I, when I'm at home, I wear it. All right, the Liebers, Ray and Lynn from Council Bluffs, Iowa, Joe. And Ray and Lynn and no Superman T-shirt. They left it at home. And yet, amazingly, Lieber is pitching well. Somehow, John has persevered the poor packing from mom and dad, and he has pitched a one-hit shutout to this point. Two out, nobody on. Cabrera with an 0-1 count. Joe and Bunt taking a ball. Oh, John Lieber wearing the uniform of a former Superman here at, at Yankee Stadium. Roger Clemens wore number 22. You think of the prospects. If the Houston Astros beat the St. Louis Cardinals and playing either the Yankees or the Red Sox, how exciting it will be to see him come back to either of those ballparks. This crowd loves it with two strikes. 43 pitches for Lieber. And he is one out away from getting through five. He's made it look easy against a very good Boston Red Sox lineup. Two and two. No butterflies for Ray Lieber, but standing and applauding his son. And they'll clap a little louder as John picks up his second strikeout of the night. Nicholson makes it two nights in a row. Working over a toothpick is the top of the order will bat for the Yankees. Jeter, Rodriguez, and Sheffield against Pedro Martinez. Martinez has struck out four, walk three. And allowed a run on two hits. Matt Damon here cheering on his Boston Red Sox. Sitting next to Casey, not Ben Affleck. A 1-0. Cabrera on one hop. One out. And Lauren Michaels and Conan O'Brien. Great seats right behind home plate. And right in front of them, Alex Rodriguez stands in. A-Rod's been hit by a pitch and been called out with two on and two out in the second. Call not looking on strikes. With one out, ball one. I think the question was coming in in this game, how would Pedro Martinez pitch? Nobody bothered to ask the question, how would Lieber pitch and how would the Red Sox hit him? Miller can't get it there in time and an infield hit for Rodriguez. You're handicapped as a third baseman because you have to play Rodriguez deep enough because of his power and the way he hits the ball with such authority. So on a ball hit like that, you really have no chance. Miller did all he could. One on, one out for Sheffield. Top of the fifth inning at St. Louis with Houston on top 4-2 in game one. Here the Yankees lead one to nothing. Both in this game and in this series. <laughs> Chef at the plate. Oh. 
That was a slide step by Martinez, and he hangs a breaking ball that Sheffield wishes he had back. Watch the slide step. A real mistake right there. Foul back by Sheffield. One and one. The pitcher, if you don't slide step often, that's the very thing that'll happen. You leave the ball up, your body's out, it doesn't have the normal timing of it, and as a result, the ball is up because you're out in front. Your body's out in front of your arm, the ball is elevated. the ground as Francona is going to come out and argue. The only way that's a foul ball is if it hit Gary Sheffield. Sheffield did not run right away. Usually that's an indication that it may have hit him and it did. It hit him in the right knee. Rodriguez running. <laughs> Sheffield wasn't and usually that's an indication the ball hit the batter. Martinez just saw his life flash before his eyes with Veritek about nine and a half feet away from him. Unloading on a throw down to second base. Martinez had to go down to the dirt. Watch your lips. So the runner back to first, one out. That's Rodriguez who's on with the infield hit. One ball, two strikes on Sheffield. And time called prior to the pitch. You can ask for time at home plate. You don't always get it, but in this case, Jeff Nelson granted time, and the count's still one and two. Sometimes it's harder to hit with speed on the bases because pitchers like Martinez will make a guy like A-Rod wait. And that's why Sheffield called timeout. You're right, Joe, he's about 10 feet away. Now the one, two. Sheffield holds up. Sheffield trying to put a charge into one. 36 home runs during the regular season. 2-2 pitch. And he just got a piece. That's what makes Sheffield so tough to pitch to. Here's a changeup down and away, and he's still able to nick it. Just get enough of it so that Pedro has to throw another pitch, perhaps in his area. The good hitters foul off good pitches. Pedro, the last three deliveries, as you look at the changeup grip. You see the circle on his index of his thumb. Pedro coming to the set position for a while. Sheffield is hung in there, not called for time. The 2-2. Two, two. two out, and he blew it right by the bat of Sheffield for his fifth strikeout. That was a fastball blown by Sheffield. There's a fastball hitter, but because of all the off-speed stuff he has shown, he throws the fastball by. That changeup before set up that fastball down the middle. Here is Hideki Matsui. What a game one he had. 0 for 2 tonight. 
struck out looking and grounded out. And Suey has that ability to stay so quiet at the plate, and then if a pitch is inside, he just leans back and attacks the baseball. What a difference from Sheffield. It's all movement. And Hideki Matsui is almost frozen at the plate before the pitch is delivered. Last night, he wasn't frozen for long. Budweiser fantasy player of last night's ALCS Game 1, Matsui with his night. You can log on to FoxSports.com on MSN. Keyword fantasy baseball. Tonight's game brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It's game time. With two out. Ball one. One ball, one strike. It's a better running situation right here because you've got a left-handed hitter up. It's a lot tougher for a catcher to throw with a left-hander up there because you can't see the jump of the runner on at first base. Right-hander, the view is clear. It'll be the nine, one, and two hitters for Boston in the sixth. Martinez trying to keep it a one-run game. Rodriguez did some more running this season, his first year with the Yankees. He stole 28 bases and was caught only four times. So you think average and power and RBIs, he had the fifth best stolen base total in the AL. Good pitch, strength two. He's got the quarter. Matsui with a runner at first, two down, a ball and two strikes from Pedro Martinez. And Matsui just got a piece, 78 mile an hour delivery from Martinez. This is the ninth postseason start for Pedro. He's five and one last year during the ALCS against the Yankees. He was 0-1, he lost game three, and then got that no decision in the infamous game seven when he was out there, still on the mound in the eighth. And it was Matsui who got him for a drive down the right field line, a double. A lot of people don't remember that Giambi in that game seven hit two home runs off Pedro Martinez. And the Yankees, obviously, without Giambi this postseason. That's not it. One on, two out, two two pitch. Talked about Pedro Martinez and the grips. The changeup is choked on the left, and the fastball on the right is held toward the ends of the fingers. It may sound simplistic, but if you throw a ball with the tips of your fingers, it's thrown harder than if you choke it. Pitch in the dirt, Veritek keeps it close as Rodriguez at bluff, trying to steal second on that delivery. Now it's a full count.
Rodriguez takes off and Matsui fouls it. Tim, you remember a few years ago when we showed a close-up of Pedro Martinez with the release of the ball coming off the fingers and the amazing extension that he gets with the index finger and the middle finger as he releases the baseball. He's almost uh, multi-jointed. Very long fingers for a man of his size. Breaking ball on three and two. Here comes another full count pitch. Got him on the outside corner. Matsui strikes out for the second time tonight. Pedro's doing his part for Boston. But the hitters can't figure out Lieber. Nine, one, and two coming up for the rest. All signs all over the place. And Pedro Martinez has responded with a terrific effort tonight. The problem for the Red Sox, the Boston hitters have done nothing. Miller was a 440 hitter this season when leading off an inning. He takes a strike on the inside corner. He leads off the number nine man, then Damon, then Bellhorn. A lot of pop-ups. That's a broken bat pop-up from Miller, one out. And with the bases empty, back to the top of the order, Damon. All we heard about were the question marks around the Yankee rotation coming into the postseason. They seemed outmatched in the division series against Minnesota. Thought the rotation for the Yankees was solid if not spectacular and so far in this LCS from Messina's first six to Lieber's first five and a third he's been phenomenal and a huge start by Kevin Brown up in Minnesota and he'll be the pitcher on Friday night here's Branson Arroyo Damon is all out of whack talk about a guy not kicking the ball up Just a backdoor little cutter. What makes Lieber so tough is that it looks hittable, but with that late movement, they have to commit. And that's when they get jammed. With the ball being away, it looks further away. The ball is actually looking about a foot outside. With the cut on the cut fastball that he's throwing and the slider, he's got different depths to it. He's got different velocities. It's difficult for them to square it and also see where it's going to end up. A 14-game winner during the regular season. Is 0-2 to Damon. Just spoiled it. Former 20-game winner is John Lieber. He did that with the Cubs in 2001. And a couple of seasons ago, had the Tommy John surgery. Missed all of last year. The Yankees signed him to a two-year deal with an option for a third. Smart move. One ball, two strikes on Damon, and that just missed. And hits it foul down the right side. The Yankees were interested. Brian Cashman did the deal with Lieber because of his history and because of the Yankees' future at the time. They knew they were going to go through a period where they would have Messina, who's locked up in a deal, but they could lose all the guys they ended up losing Pettit, Wells, and Clemens. And so Lieber stepped in, and boy, is he filling a void here. Still one and two on Damon. Joe Girardi, who played in Chicago with Lieber, had some considerable influence on Lieber coming here, especially under the circumstance of him having surgery, knowing he wasn't going to pitch last year. Last year. Much of uh, Girardi's recommendation uh, was listened to. So the counts one ball, two strikes. Damon hopping around in the batter's box trying to get something going. Two and two. Normally, when pitchers have that Tommy John surgery, they take the tendon or ligament from the wrist area. His was taken from his hamstring area. Hamstring of the left leg. Damon stays alive on a foul tip.
Blowing into that pitching hand, and now we look at the scar on the pitching elbow, the right elbow for Lieber. This surgery is so perfected, guys that come back from this are actually much stronger. The 2 2. Damon trying to spoil another, and that ball will get out of play. And Johnny Damon is the first Boston hitter tonight to make Lieber work to get an out. He has had an array of funky swings up there. Off the end of the bat, jammed. I'm surprised he still has the same bat he started with. This one off the end of the bat. Flat-footed swing. This is the 11th pitch that he had back more than several innings for Lieber in this game. Johnny can do that. Look so bad and then pop one out of the ballpark. 20 home runs this year. That's hooks. Oh. With nothing else, Damon is accomplishing something here in this at bat. With Bellhorn to follow and then Ramirez. One out, nobody on, one to nothing, Yankees in the sixth. And Damon has worked it to a full count. He was 0-2 in a blink. Johnny Damon playing a little game with a bad boy. Is he loose? Cutter. And another foul. Gives you an idea of how, how much a pitcher can miss and still be effective. That pitch was designed to be outside. He missed about a foot. Open stance. And it closes off actually wants the ball up out over the plate. A good fastball hitter, David. With one out. Damon, another foul. This is a great at bat. For what has led up to this at bat, Damon is doing exactly what these Red Sox hitters have to do. They have to make him work. And is he working? I, I, whether he gets a hit here or not, this is a, a big at bat. Very successful. out of 17 in his career against John Lieber including an 0 for 2 tonight with a couple of ground outs I, I can't wait to hear which one of you two is going to jump on the pitch sequence who can remember all 15 go ahead Al Cutter you're the new guy Cutters he's going to throw a lot of cutters he actually threw most of the cutters Festival in there yeah, now what? away, fastball away. That pitch right there set up. The reason why he swung at that fastball was because the cutter's away. Fastball in. Again, just forget it. <laughs> now Damon trying to drive one into center. Bernie Williams with a running grab. And that little mini battle was won by Lieber in the end, but Damon did all he could. Something happened to Bernie Williams on that play. He either lost the ball in the lights, obviously made the catch, but it was not the routine type of, of catch that the, the ball dictated. Going to his left and in. Damon hits this about as well as he's hit any ball tonight. I think he lost the ball in the lights. Fortunately, the ball caught him. Bellhorn, one ball, one strike. St. Louis still batting in the bottom of the fifth as they've tied Houston 4-4. We just saw Damon getting congratulations from his teammates. They know what he just accomplished, even though he made it out. Lieber has had to work in this inning for the first time all night. Lieber went from 47 pitches to 63. That's exactly what they needed to do. 
this crowd could care less about pitch count. They want to see the end of the top of the six. And it's a 2-2 count. Bullpen is rested and ready to go for Joe Torre. And for the most part, even though the bullpen had to work the last six innings last night, nobody was stretched out for the Red Sox in game one. I was thinking the same thing. A 2-2 to Bellhorn. Full count. The Yankees have already gotten out of John Lieber what they wanted tonight. for Lieber, his third of the night, and another perfect inning. Came in talking about Pedro. He may end it talking about Lieber, still one to nothing. A beautiful night in New York and providing aerial coverage for tonight's broadcast. AmeriQuest Airship Liberties, captained by Scott Daniker and Corky Belanger Jr. Liberties, the airship of AmeriQuest Mortgage Company, the official mortgage company of Major League Baseball. Williams gets one up and in, ball one, and we begin the bottom of the sixth with the Yankees cling to that first inning RBI hit by Sheffield. Still one nothing. Off the hands, one ball, one strike. For Pedro Martinez in his career against the Yankees, innings one through five, and then six plus. The ERA is six plus, including October baseball. He's pitched well tonight. Struck out six, walked three. Allowed only three hits. Two and one. So far tonight, Williams 0 for 2 with a strike out and a ground out. Two and two. Joe, you and I talked about this uh, last summer in Boston. Name we did, the Yankees in Boston. If Pedro Martinez retired right now, would he be in the Hall of Fame? And our definitive answer after looking at his numbers is absolutely. Here's a 2-2. Just missed the outside corner. It's a full count. 182 career wins for Pedro Martinez. You always hear that 300 win plateau is automatic entry, but stack them up against one of the best pitchers of all time. 3-2 pitch. Reaching for it was Williams, and that is out number one. This is a fascinating graphic when you compare Pedro Martinez with Sandy Koufax's career record. The ERA almost identical, the strikeouts. How about the bottom line, though? Koufax, 137 complete games. Pedro, 42. I know, how you're very close, and I've learned a lot from Sandy Koufax. I have. He's a special guy. He certainly knows an awful lot about pitching and a good man. One out. First pitch is up and away to Posada. Jorge's over one with a walk. He is really a baseball royalty, isn't he? Whenever you're around him, you feel it. You really do. You realize you're around somebody real special. Two and up. The only guys who didn't feel that way about Sandy Koufax were guys with bats in their hands standing 60 feet, 6 inches away. He didn't like those West Coast swings. Period. It wasn't just Koufax. With one out and nobody on. Two balls, no strikes. Now it's 3 and oh. 100 pitches on the night for Pedro Martinez. 
That pitch right there shows you where Pedro is in his pitching as far as where he is with his stuff and what he recognizes as what he needs to do. 2-0 curveball in the 1-0 game. Changeup on 3-0. With, with a 3-0 changeup. Clearly very well aware of that this game could be won or lost on one pitch. Every single pitch is like a page of a book. And the one pitch prior to it has meaning for the next pitch. And so on. Well, 3-1. 3-0 changeup had meaning for the 3-1 one walk. One on, one out. Let's check in with Jeannie for an update. Well, coming into tonight, Joe, Scott Rowland said his cap was close to being close, and that's close. The Cardinals' third baseman gets his first hit of the postseason, an RBI single scoring Larry Walker. Rowland 0 for 14 until that hit. It's a big one. Tied the game. All right. Thanks, Jeannie. We get a chance to keep track of that game in our Fox Box 4-4. Top of the sixth, Dave Wallace on the phone. I know Tim would drive crazy. Goldberg no takes the ball. When people focus on pitch counts, and that a hitter will tell you how well a guy's throwing on the mound. But the 100 pitch mark this season for Pedro Martinez has kind of been that benchmark where things start to go south. And that's why Mike Templin is up at throwing. Pitches are different. And now, when from start to start, you're stronger sometimes. Sometimes your pitch limit could be 125, sometimes 90, sometimes 110. Well, that's exactly right, Tim. Not every start do you feel 100%. I don't know what 100% is anymore, but you figure out a way. You find in your repertoire what's working on that day, you go with it. 92 miles per hour, the fastball strike two. Good fastball to all room. Perfect spot. Three that's the thing, thing about Martinez is with his guile, when his pitch count is, is elevated, he still has the proper stuff to change speeds and get by on smarts. And he gives up his first home run tonight. A one two delivery for Martinez. to get inside. Actually, Baratek is sitting outside, and that mitt crosses the plate. The pitcher is missed by a lot, and Martinez did to the glee of the Yankees in their favors. And that look from Martinez. A frustration. And Zolrud took the trip around the bases. And now Francona has to weigh do with Pedro Martinez. You know Terry would love Pedro to get through this sixth inning. He's facing the number eight hitter. He's got Timlin ready to go if he wants to pull the trigger. Two and two. Red Sox will have the big bats to the plate in the seventh. Ramirez, Ortiz, and Millar. While Ramirez chases down that baseball to get rid of it, we give you this week's web and symptom checker. Focused on that right ankle tendon. 
for Kurt Schilling. Check your own symptoms with WebMD's symptom checker at WebMD.com. Two-run homer by Olrud and a 2-2 pitch coming to Cairo. On the outside corner, two out. And strikeout number seven for Martinez. Pedro comes back and hits the front corner with that fastball to get Miguel Cairo. If you handicap this game at the beginning, you'd say, well, Pedro Martinez has got to pitch a solid game. I would say he's done that to this point. He's on the short end on the scoreboard. The other part would be, you think Martinez wouldn't have to pitch a shutout or allow only one run or two runs. If he pitched six innings and gave up three, the kind of offense that he has supporting him, that would be enough. But not against Lieber. All route deep. Who's your daddy? Back after this from your local Fox station. First pinch of the seventh inning is a strike from John Lieber. Pedro Martinez after that half inning. Looks like he's finished for the night. Gave up a walk and a blast to Olru to make it 3-0. Yankees on top, seventh inning, and Manny Ramirez is up. One ball, one strike. If Lieber can get through a scoreless seven, he will have outpitched Mike Messina's start in game one. Messina was perfect into the seven, but then it unraveled. And you would think that Joe Torre would go to Tom Gordon and then Mariano Rivera. Lieber could fit this game right into that late inning formula for Joe Torre. He can get through the seven. Cheater to his right. Wow. Back to the home run by Olrud. Pedro started him off off speed. There's change up down. Came back with another change up. Clearly think of John was swinging early in the count. Perfect backdoor slider. Comes back with another change up. You see Veritek setting away. He throws a fastball in. Play with John Olerud in Toronto and with the Mets. Couldn't be a nicer guy. Really, when you say one of the nicest human beings you want to be around. And for the longest time, they tried to get him to pull the ball and hit more home runs. And ironically enough, a guy who went the other way hits a home run. And pulled it into right. With one out, Ortiz, strike one. The top run-producing offense in the American League, the Boston Red Sox, during the regular season, still trying to figure out Lieber. St. Louis has taken the lead in the sixth inning at home over the Astros. Ortiz, that's going to fall in for a hit. And David Ortiz is on with one out in the seventh. The Red Sox have waited to the seventh inning to get their hardest hit ball of the night. That was the same last night. Yep. And they came up with five runs on five hits, and it started with one out in the seventh. It was the double by Bellhorn last night and the single by Ortiz. Only the second hit and third base runner of the night for the Red Sox. Bell Stottlemyre out to talk. Action starts for the Yankees out in their bullpen. And let's go out to Jeannie for a St. Louis Houston update. You got it. Weak rounder to first. Now watch Jeff Bagwell worried about the batter and not really paying attention to the runner heading home. Yikes. St. Louis pulls ahead. And then Tony Womack. This one gets through. Sends home a run. And now it is six five Cardinals bottom six. Thank you, Jeannie. Red Sox in this series. First six innings. 
One hit, one walk, no runs. And as we said last night, in the seventh inning, was when Terry Francona's group woke up and went to work. Millar now. Tom Gordon getting loose in the bullpen for the Yankees. There's Gordon ready to back up Lieber if he needs help here in the seventh. Millar missed that by a foot, and it's 0 2. Sometimes a better stance dictates how you pitch it. The Yankees do not try to come inside on Kevin Millar. He sees that ball much better than the ball away. Most guys with open stances do. One ball, two strikes. Nixon. A guy who's been hot down the stretch. Waits on deck. I think you keep going outside with the slider. No sense coming inside. Millar grounds to third. Rodriguez to second. Over to first to get the play. Seven shutout innings from John Lieber. Only two hits allowed. Nicely turned by Rodriguez and Cairo. New pitcher is Mike Timlin. Six innings, three runs, four hits, a home run along the way. Four walks, seven strikeouts for Pedro Martinez. And if he gets a decision, he can only get the loss. Top of the order for the Yankees, Jeter first up. First pitch swinging, that's a foul ball. Last night, after the Red Sox had closed within a run, with five in the seventh, two in the eighth, the bottom of the eighth inning, Mike Timlin came in and allowed a two-out, two-run double to Bernie Williams to make it 10-7, and that's how it ended. So more breathing room for Mariano Rivera in the ninth inning. The Red Sox ended up putting two on. No one. Timlin with a great sinker. He's always had that. He stays inside the ball. He's got a short stride. He stays on top of it. He pours in on the right hand. He stays in there pretty much the whole of bat. Occasional slider down the way. Tough on right hand. Set up inside and Cheater fouls it away. Our game summary is brought to you by Nissan. The pitching line. John Lieber has outpitched Pedro Martinez. Lieber has been fantastic. Two hits shutout to this point. Olrud, a two-run home run, his ninth career postseason home run. That made it 3-0. The Yankees, when they lead a series two games to none in the postseason, tough to do. Musical recap. Our headlines. offense as a 92 mile an hour pitch misses for ball one to A-Rod. Tom Gordon has shut it down in the Yankee bullpen. So perhaps John Lieber will be back out there in the eighth inning. Red Sox with only three base runners tonight. Two hits, one by Cabrera, one by Ortiz. A walk. Look at Dad, Ray Lieber. 
Chang, his son, pitched his first LCS game. It's only his second postseason start coming off the start against the Twins. He's never pitched a more important game, never pitched a diving catch by Miller. Great reactions by Bill Miller to make the catch. Game break. Let's check in again with Jeannie. Well, on most teams, the number two hitter doesn't do a whole lot to help the team. But hey, this new guy's pretty good. Newest member of the Cardinals, Larry Walker, infield single Tony Womack scores on a throwing error. Walker three for four. His Cardinals lead seven four. Still in the sixth inning there, Jeannie. Thanks. Two out, nobody on. Bottom of the seventh, Sheffield. Ready to unleash. And that's off the end of the bat, his second hit. Two out of four is Sheffield. And now five out of eight for this series. With Matsui coming up, Terry Francona is going to go back to his bullpen and call on Embry. So last night, and not an identical situation, but with Timlin on the mound and Matsui coming up, they leave Timlin in. Tonight, it's Embry. Mike Timlin saying that was ugly to the camera. He gave up the two-out hit to Sheffield and now hands it off to Alan Embry trying to finish off the seventh inning. Hideki Matsui stands in his way. Matsui, a huge game one. He's over three tonight. And fights it off and floats it into left for a hit. And it's two on, two out. With Bernie Williams coming up. And a little chuckle from Matsui. They don't all have to be pretty. It hits a hit. Now left field here at Yankee Stadium. It's more spacious than left field in other ballparks but obviously, alone Fenway. obviously Fenway Park yeah so Ramirez had a long way to go as you see St. Louis 10 to 4 lead over Houston and Keith Folk for the second night in a row is getting loose his team on the short end right now it's Embry against Bernie Williams Williams pops it up into right. Nixon coming to get it. Getting over. Two hits, two left. Eight left tonight for the Yankees. Eighth inning rolls in. Three nothing. Yankees. A couple of left-handed bats to start this eighth inning for Boston. Down three nothing. First up, John Nixon. Ball one from John Lieber. Joe Torre and Brian Cashman were excited to get Lieber, knowing that he would miss all of last year because he's a guy that doesn't walk anybody. As he hits the inside corner, one ball, one strike. He's a guy that keeps you in games, and when you've got a lineup like the Yankees boast year after year, you figure this guy's going to win a lot of games for you. And he won 14 during the regular season, and the Yankees are trying to win their second postseason game this year. When he starts, Nixon is on to start the inning, and that might be it for Lieber. If you go back to the middle part of September, September 18th, John Lieber made a start against the Red Sox and got into the seventh inning with a no-hitter goal. It was a 14-4 win eventually as he was matched up against Derek Lowe. We're about to hear a huge ovation. Ortiz took him deep that day. Torrey's going to go get Lieber here. What a job. And these fans know how to salute. First down of the pen tonight for the Yankees. Tom Gordon. Pitch last night went two thirds of an inning, allowed two runs on three hits. It's Veritek at the plate. He went deep last night. 
takes the ball. Hitting a two-run home run against Tanyan Sturts. Gordon, number one setup man of the Yankees. A good fastball and a sharp breaking curveball. Seven plus from Lieber who asked for the ball when he was relieved on the mound in the seventh inning. Game two against the Twins. That accomplishment fighting his way all the way back from arm injury and surgery. As Gordon makes his fans groan falling behind 2-0. and A dangerous hitter Jason Veritek. Was 0 for 36 at Yankee Stadium this season that hit the home run and ended last night. Two hits in his final two at bats. Joe Torre described Tom Gordon as his eighth inning closer. Even last night with Ortiz coming up, he felt good with Gordon on the mound. Then Ortiz doubled off the glove of Matsui in left field. Two runs scored. And it made it an 8-7 to seven ball game. And then Bernie Williams had the double in the bottom of the eighth inning. That was the end of the scoring. Here's a two on to Veritek. Good pitch, two and two. Slider, slider down and in. The pitch before that, Posada went out to Gordon and Basically, to calm him down and make him realize that making his pitches and the pitch before that, why he came out was a fastball that was supposed to be in. It was left out over the plate. It was 2 0, now it's 2 2. Full count. Red Sox trailing by three. It'll be interesting to see whether Trot Nixon runs. Olrud is playing behind Nixon at first base. Nixon still not at full speed. That left quad barking on it. Going and Veritek gets it by. Oh! And Veritek needs a new bat. Really can't send him right here because Olrud's close enough where there might be a play at first base and Nixon slowed by that injury. Nixon a leadoff hit, Chase Lieber. Baratek with a full count dealing with Gordon. Into right center field. That's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. Nixon is chugging to third. They're going to hold him at third, down three to nothing. And it's second and third. Nobody out, and the Red Sox making noise in the eighth. That's a difference in scoring a run and not scoring a run. Nixon not running at first base. And with nobody out, Dale Swain, the third base coach, forced to hold it at third. High slider, hammered to right center, so Veritek with another big hit. Red Sox are threatening. So they meet on the mound. Mariano Rivera continues to stretch, has not started to throw out of that Yankee bullpen. There's nobody out in the eighth. Beginning this weekend, Oscar De La Hoya and the next great champ are moving to the new home on FSN. Eight contenders remain to see who has the heart and skill to be a champion. The next great champ is now only on FSN. It's Orlando Cabrera come to the plate. Cabrera came into this game his last 49 games with Boston, a 319 hitter. Bottom of the order doing damage, at least getting on base. And Rivera has to crank it up here in the eighth inning again. Hanging on every 
pitch. You can bet in New England. What's Cabrera going to do? Strike one. Cabrera, very good fastball hitter. Gordon pretty much covered right at you with a good fastball. There was a first pitch slider. Cabrera is very susceptible to a, a depth breaking ball, something that has depth, longer curveball life rather than a tighter cutter curveball, cutter slider. Gordon wants Posada to go through the signs again. John Brera takes high, 96 miles per hour from Gordon. Largest deficit overcome by the Red Sox in the postseason. To win a game, three runs have done it four times, and they trail right now 3 0. Cabrera with an important at bat here in the eighth. To the shortstop, Nixon will score. Out at first is Cabrera, it's three to one. And that run is charged to Lieber. So the RBI ground out, the Yankees will take that. And it's a runner at second, one out. Trading it out for a run. When you have a three run lead, you can do that. So Cabrera grounds out without moving Veritek to third base. The difference between grounding out to the right side of the infield and grounding out to the left side of the infield. You get your RBI, but you don't move the runner along. Now it's Bill Miller who's had a flair for the dramatic this season. Miller, the tying run at the plate, takes a strike. And he had a pitch to go the other way. It was a slider away and he still pulled off of it. It was actually a good pitch for him to drive the right field. Now it's Miller. Ball one strike. Lieber, like the rest of us, can just sit and watch. Falls behind, 2-1. No matter what, the top of this Red Sox lineup will bat again. Right now, all eyes on the number nine hitter, Bill Miller. Last year's AL batting champ, 2-1 pitch. Three and one. The hitless Damon on deck. Well, Miller's got a free pitch right here. He can look inside, look for something down. He's a good low ball header, and look for something to yank. And if it's not there, take it. Right. Damon actually has hit Gordon better. Seven for 21 with one home run. He's next. Sox with a lot of late inning noise so far in this series, but they lost game one. And they trail in game two, three to one. The three one will count. Gordon's got to throw a pitch that he knows he can throw for a strike quality in an area where Miller can't hit it out. Generally, down and away. Miller grounds to the second baseman, Cairo. That's a big out picked up by Gordon. Two out, Veritek to third. This ground out will mark the end of the night for Tom Gordon. 
just like last night, it's Rivera. Loose, ready to go in the eighth. Joe Torre to the mound. Damon coming up, representing the tying run. Close to the top of the hour, close to 11 o'clock in the east. We welcome you back to Yankee Stadium. Our producer, Pete Machesca, our director, Bill Webb. Joe Buck, Tim McCarver, Al Leiter with you. We are in the top of the eighth. The run is finally hope for Terry Francona's team. They came in trailing 3 to nothing. It's 3-1. to one. The starters this series, Schilling and Pedro for Boston. Nine innings, nine earned runs. Combo of Messina and Lieber. Lieber was fantastic tonight. It's the shutout into this eighth. Tying run at the plate, it's Johnny Damon. Hitless in this series, facing Rivera, ball one. In the postseason, Rivera against the Red Sox, five for five in save opportunities. With an ERA of 0 0.64. That includes last night's save. A four-out save. A shattered bat, that's a foul ball. That bat is in eight pieces. It's in bad heaven. <laughs> Cut fastball right in on the hands. They see it out over the plate, the hitter does. They commit, moves about a foot into the handle of the bat. It's almost as though, from an outfielder standpoint, you have to position backwards in this situation. Damon has it center the ball and eight it back against the Yankees. So it wouldn't make sense that he'd do that against Rivera. You almost have to play the outfield in this situation. Damon's been so far out in front on pitches. Now he's in the hole one and two. Also, Rivera's style is very much what you just said, Tim. He jams people. If you have a cut fastball like that, especially coming in on a left-hander, it's hard to extend your arm. Unless it's a mistake, Got to be a jam shot. Trying to close out the top of the eighth. And that's a foul ball. Home plate umpire Jeff Nelson put his hands up late. It's almost as though Damon on the backswing knocked the ball to a position that Posada didn't have a chance to feel it. The ball hit the glove initially. Play for the Red Sox in the eighth. Two and two on Johnny Damon. That foul ball one more time. The ball hits the glove. No, it didn't hit the mask. Once it hits the mask, it's good. Damon, 20 home runs during the regular season. Takes three. Same old story with Rivera and the Yankees. A two-run affair. And Alan Embry is trying to keep it that way. Three to one Yankees, bottom of the eighth, Posada first up. Hit for Posada. His first hit of the night. This week, Fox NFL Sunday returns, beginning with America's number one pregame show live from Foxborough. We'll all be up in the New England area. Then the Seahawks try to rebound from their tough loss to the Rams. They take on the unbeaten New England Patriots, two of the best teams in the NFL. Or other regional action. Fox NFL Sunday begins this week at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Fox Sports High Definition, only on Fox. Here's Olrud, whose home run back in the sixth inning is the difference now. Pedro Martinez after a one-out walk to Posada. Bill Miller at third base is looking for a bunt. John Olrud is not going to be bunting. Miller actually in front of the bag. And Olrud can hit the ball that way. That's the danger in playing up, and now he's moving back. In the air to right center field. 
field. Damon back for round number one. Didn't get all of that. He got all of his shot back in the sixth inning, which is at this point the biggest swing of the night. Now it's 3-1, to one, and we have seen the last of Alan Emery tonight. Folk appears, Embry disappears, Cairo and Lofton coming up. Yankees batting, one on, one out, up two. It's Keith Folk here against Miguel Cairo. Ball one high. Folk is the closer for the Red Sox. There are the numbers for the regular season and what he's done in the postseason at the bottom. The shot at first with one out. Check. This move with Falk being in the game right now, assuming the score stays the same, you don't want your closer not having pitched for so long. And having him uh, get an inning in here is important with the off day tomorrow. Travel day tomorrow, and then we resume on Friday night at Fenway Park. And Cairo gets hit by the pitch. Put two on with one out. That was the furthest thing from anybody's mind. Looked like a changeup. Hit him on the left shoulder. That'll bring in Lofton with two on and one out. Assuming the Red Sox don't come back and win this game. And in my mind, that's still an assumption with Bellhorn, Ramirez, and Ortiz coming up, even with Mariano Rivera on the mound in the ninth inning for the Yankees. The Red Sox would be down two games to none. There's a strength to Lofton. You know what the quotes will be from the Red Sox clubhouse after the game being in that situation. And I, for one, I'm willing to accept that they're not going to be devastated. They won't like it being down two games to none. But this group does not appear to be the type, the Red Sox, it will fold as they head back to Fenway Park on a check swing foul ball to make it 0-2. Obviously, you don't want to be swept by the Yankees in New York. But this group is a unique bunch, and you know they'll come out fighting on Friday night. There is no alternative. What else are you going to do? If you're down 0-2 or you're up 2-0, you have the job to do, and that's execute. Do the things in which a baseball player has to be at his best to win a baseball game. That Bronson, baseball game. Bronson Arroyo is scheduled to pitch game three. Lofton strikes out for the second out. If the Red Sox ever have a chance to be de demoralized, Bronson Aro Arroyo and Tim Wakefield in games three and four. But they've had a double pop today if they lose this game. Not only losing the game, but perhaps losing Kurt Schilling as a starter in game five. They're going to work him out at Fenway Park. They're going to try to figure out some way to stabilize his right ankle to allow him to pitch in game five. You brought up a good point in our meeting. You can make a case for the Red Sox just waiting until game five, not putting him through the workout on the side to limit the wear and tear on that ankle and see what happens in game five and have an alternative ready. Derek Lowe would be the alternative. There are many starts during the year where you just don't feel as good physically, 100%, 50%, 70%. I don't know what it is, but to have the work in between the five days, for what? You know it doesn't. It hurts. His ankle hurts. Why are you going to put some strain and stress on it? No, it's very full well. It's not going to help. Two on, two out. Cheater takes a strike. It's one and one. What they will say and what they did say is we just want to make sure that it's even realistic, and if it isn't, if they can't figure out a way to stabilize and support the ankle, they will shut Kurt Schilling down for the rest of the playoffs. Game five won't even 
be an option. The 1-1. One, one. Two balls and a strike. I think it's one of those situations where instead of chilling, pitching between starts, it's more to see how he pitches with that plastic sleeve on his ankle. Because the one he had on last night did not support the ankle. We'll try something different tomorrow. Here's a two on to Jeter. Three and one. With Rodriguez next. LCS back. Team down 2-0 has lost 13 straight series. Two on, two out, three one pitch to Jeter. That'll load him up. And just like last night, the Red Sox trying to hang in, knowing they have their work cut out for them with Rivera in the game. Cannot obviously afford to fall any further behind. And it's going to be a matchup of Folk and Rodriguez. To see if it stays 3-1. tonight for Rodriguez three in this ALCS just pulled off a little bit it has respect for that split finger that he's been throwing a lot of off inside on the right he's just painted a fastball away Looks kind of like an emergency hack for 1 0. Two balls and a strike. Derek Lowe starts to loosen. third. Bases loaded, two out, three, two pitch. A-Rod. We'll see another. In the ninth inning, against Rivera, Bellhorn, Ramirez, and Ortiz. Anybody gets on Millar. Powerful bats coming up for Boston. They trail by two right now. That's into right center field and Folk has kept the game within a reasonable reach. 
four hitters coming up for Boston. Facing Rivera. Down two. We will represent the American League. Yankees or the Red Sox? Bellhorn first up, ball one. Bellhorn, Ramirez, and Ortiz in the ninth with Boston trailing by two. Down one game to none. They're in the same spot in St. Louis, game one of the NLCS, 10-6. Top of the ninth inning there. Bellhorn hitless tonight. Season one. to get Bellhorn out because of who's coming up next. Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz. Another cut fastball. The reason why these left-handed hitters have to commit all of baseball and face Rivera is because that looks just like a fastball out around the bunting circle about 20 feet in front and they have to commit. And about a second out of his hand to home plate. They have to determine whether they have to swing or not about a half a second. With one out, here's Ramirez hit list tonight. Only one out of seven in this series. Big bats for the Red Sox are going to have to do much more when this series shifts to Fenway. But Boston won't have a chance. Ramirez only hit was a single in the eighth inning last night. Cutter. It actually looked like a ball. It was. Ramirez checks it on a pitch. It was high. One and two. Pedro Martinez made the start tonight. Six innings, three runs, four hits. A quote-unquote quality start, but not good enough. John Lieber better pitched into the eighth inning. Allowed a run on only three hits. Rivera trying to close it. Two and two. Ramirez shoots the gap in left center field. That is a rocket out there up against the wall. Manny Ramirez has a one-out double. The Red Sox want to keep on playing, and right now they'll send David Ortiz high on the list of potential MVP award winners in the AL to the plate is the tying run. That was why it was vital that Rivera get Bellhorn out leading off the inning because Manny Ramirez is so dangerous and David Ortiz, the reason that Mariano Rivera did not come in the game last night because of his career numbers against Rivera. Ortiz last night representing the tying run at the plate against Gordon in the eighth. Off the glove of Matsui. That made it 8-7. Yankees won it 10-7. Ortiz trying to check one out. Strike one.
one thing on David Ortiz's mind to tie the game. Ortiz down the line and right. Hooking into the corner and stop. 0 oh 2. Ortiz against Rivera. These were the numbers Tim referred to. 7 out of 13 in his career against Mariano Rivera. No balls, two strikes. Then he pulls one foul, the cutter. No way you're going to hit that ball fair. That 0-2 pitch, no chance. This time it's the tying run of the person of Kevin Millar. 18 regular season home runs. He came into this game with four home runs in his last nine games against Yankee pitching. Strike one. Looked like Kevin held up. Yeah, he did. Late swing one and two, and the Yankees are one strike away from a two games to none lead over the Red Sox. Another bat to the pile. Still one and two, and Millar needs a new stick. Yes, the World Series.